Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review in the beer room. Uh, slightly cleaner in there than it has been. Just a bit of a hole though. Today we're going to be reviewing Vintage Woody Champagne from Blue Monkey Brewery. Um, I had this last year for the first time at the um, Robin Hood Beer Festival. Uh, Eleven and a half percent, so it's got some balls to it. So golden ale, and uh, right. So it says here, a strong, unconventional IPA, brewed with British malts and German hops, fermented with champagne yeast and aged for twelve months in an oak Bordeaux wine barrel. The flavors are warm mix of fruity wines followed by oak notes with a dry finish 11 and a half percent wow that's right, one of these bottles so uh, i try not to break my bloody hand lifting it off oh yes that whew, got, a bong, got a bit of a bong to it straight away how do you get these chuffing bottles to go up? Like that. Alright. So, 11.5%. Decent strength, obviously. I'll not be doing too many reviews of this tonight, because... Uh, I'll be on your back. And the first thing that hits you is the aroma. Wow. And there's a fruitiness. Um, so it's supposed to be golden ale. It looks more like a amber, a dark amber there. No head. Uh, there's definitely lacing in there. I can say I can't see no carbonation. And there's a fruitiness. Did it say there's a fruitiness? Because the bloody is. Yeah, a mix of fruity wines. Very different. Why is it that maybe I'm, I need to angle this slightly? Yeah. So, um, really strong fruity aroma. I'm just tasting it now. Oh, oh. Fruity in the taste. Lots of the ABV comes through quickly. It's very strong. You definitely get the the wood characteristics in the wine, uh, in the wine, in the beer. Um, oh. Very, very different to uh, a lot, you know, to beers that I'm used to drinking. Oh. So, you know, it's... It's like a... It's like an evolution of beers with, you know, a cross of wine in it, you know, and it's... Uh, I mean, eleven and a half percent. It's as strong as wine, you know. Uh, let's be fair. Most wines, uh, <clears throat> red wines, start at eleven percent upwards to about fifteen. Uh, you know, at the most, white wines, anything from about normal from about nine to about thirteen. Same with rosés. So we're in we're in wine territory, and oh my. That is strong. Flipping heck. <sighs> the fruitiness, it's um it takes some getting used to. Um I've I've had champagne before, but not vintage woody champagne. So obviously 
chit the vintage thing they've actually left it in the barrel you know for 12 months but in a border wine barrel so you know red wine barrel so the oaky flavors come out the 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 the, the, the fruity wine flavor the red you know red wine uh, seeps into the beer because obviously if it's brewed in that sort of barrel it, it is you know that wood soaks in the wine so the beer goes in and it it soaks it back in and out again and uh, wow what a different um it's like a beer wine crossover you know it's uh unique uh, i've never had anything like this i've had imperial stouts and all that thing like barley wine type wine beers but oh my god um yeah plenty of lace in there um so it's the closest thing to a beer and wine mixed. It's it's different. Bloody hell, it's different. I've got to be honest. It's it's a tad strong, and it's a tad text from getting used to. Um, oh. And bear in mind, it's only a 330ml glass, and I am struggling already. I'm not joking. So, a fiver for the bottle. You know, like most beer connoisseurs, beer wine reviewers, you want to be trying these, you know. Uh, I don't think a fiver for that size bottle is not that bad, actually. For 11.5% beer, uh, it's certainly cheaper than certain other places, you know. Um, but, oh, me. Lots of fruit in the aroma, lots of fruit in the taste, like dark fruits, berries. Obviously, the flavours from the Bordeaux wine are coming through. So what should be a golden ale, that's not a golden ale. So, you know, it's obviously started off life as a golden ale. And, uh, I mean, it's saying it's an unconventional IPA. It's something. <laughs> it's bloody something. It's, uh, oh. I'm glad I only bought one, for obvious reasons, it's strong, and the cost price as well. Uh, I'm glad I'm, glad I'm trying it, um, it's going to take me a long time to get to the bottom, good thing, you know, trying to do quick reviews ain't happening. Oh, oh dear, got to be honest. It's not my cup of tea. It's uh, oh, it's a belly warmer of another degree, you know. Um, wow, that's all I can say. But this sort of beer is not aimed at people in pubs. It's aimed at the bottle drinkers. You ain't going to be going to the pub to buy a pint of this because you're looking at something like seven or eight quid a pint. So, this is for bo bottle drinkers, it's for connoisseurs, you know. It's for people to try and get what they can out of the, the beer. And it's to... Bloody hell, is that spider? Um, definitely a beer-wine crossover. Beer with wine characteristics. And boy, is it strong. Um, obviously, f first drink of the day. It's lit up at six. Uh, on Thursday night, Friday tomorrow. Yay. Looking forward to that. Um, so I'm, I'm a week and a half away now. Well, certainly under two weeks away from finishing at this present workplace after four years and uh, it's emotional you know I am feeling the stress of it all and uh, you know um, you know I'm not invincible to any sort of stress I don't think you do as you get older you know but you know, mental health these days you know for people who've got no mental health issues whatsoever who don't stress Nothing phases them. You are very lucky. 
for the people that do get stressed and anxious, depressed and all that. Life's a roller coaster, you know. I can have a roller coaster in one day. I can start off good, go bad, go good, medium bad, and uh, you know, little things. And uh, so yeah, moving job. Uh, I'm still thinking about it, you know. Uh, I'm still. Some things excite me. Some things concern me, because as a worker, I can do a lot of work. If you're looking for quality work, where you take your time, you do the job to the very best, and I'm, that sort of work takes time. Any any tradesman who does the job to the best how it's supposed to be done, it takes you time. No one can do a slap dash job and get super quality. You know, it ain't happening. You know, not in any job. So to do the best job, it takes time, but. To, once you get everything, once you get things rolling behind you, you know, then the job becomes enjoyable. People start to thank you for your work, and you know, and uh, I'm lucky, lucky in the role that I've got at the moment, where I am messed about quite a bit. But some of the sites we do, they are exceptionally good, you know. And then I look around some of the sites of other people doing, and I think, oh my God, your standard of gardening is poor. And uh, I'll not say no names in case anybody watches this review. But uh, yeah, it's poor. I mean, some of the people at my workplace have been trained to use uh, weed killer. And what that does, what weed, kill weed killing does is gives you the ability to control your site as a tenant on sites, you, on some of the sites these people go on, weeds are an issue. If you're not a gardener, weeds are an issue. So you, you first thing you do, you get somebody spray, somebody doing the mowing or whatever it is they do, the other person goes spraying. You spray the shrubberies, you spray gardens where it's obvious they're not doing anything. Don't touch anywhere that's got plants in. Uh, you spray around tree bases, you spray the paths, you spray block paved areas where weeds are coming through. You get that done and then you control the site. So a month later when you go again, if it's a month later, all you're doing is mowing. And then a month after that you're spraying again. But because the mowing looks better and then you blow off where, where, where the grass is too bit uh, tall, because it, it happens, you know. You blow it off, you blow it off as best as you can. People look and think, he's trying his best there. Fair play to that gardener. And uh, then if they see you having 10 minutes longer for break, they ain't going to complain because they'll think, they're good gardeners they are. I don't mind them. And, you know, in, and you translate that into every job. And it's about being smart. It's about using your brain. It's about clever, clever workmanship. You know, uh... And that's what it is, you know. But uh, sadly, not a lot of people do that. Anyway, back to the back to the beer because uh, I couldn't drink it that quick. I'm not even halfway down. I mean, that is sack. <laughs> it's only three thirty mils, but that eleven percent is battering me. I feel stodged. Oh, the fruitiness is intense. It really is intense. You can't see if you get, if you got the ability to either get it in a beer festival, if they ever do it on a beer festival, uh, or buy it from the shop. Even if you can order it online, get yourself a bottle of it. Especially if you live in Nottingham area, go down to the brewery shop. The lovely people in there. Get yourself a bottle. It will taste, it will test your taste buds to the maximum. And that's what beers are about, you know. The best beers do test your taste buds. And even though some beers are one-offs, you know, you drink it once, that's it. I'm not ever doing that again. But for that one initial tasting, it's blown barriers. And even though if I'm being honest, I, w I wouldn't want to, I would never want to drink it again. That's being honest. But 
I'm glad I spent the five pound and bought it in the first place because it's unique. I've never tasted anything like this. It's the beer, the wine characteristics, the intense fruit that's coming through. Um, it's just totally blowing, you know. Bloody 11.5%. And you know, the funny thing is, I could drink a, a glass of red wine and it wouldn't bother me. And red wine's obviously more stronger. But because this is brand new to my taste buds, you know, you, you your brain is like a computer. You put something new through it, you, your brain's like, whoa, what's this rubbish? And this is exactly why this uh, just blow, blows your brain. It's fucking hell. Oh, I can't drink it fast. I do apologise for the length of the review. I did go off on a tangent for a minute or two. But, uh, yeah. Whew. It's a belter. Not said any more than that. It's a belter. Right. Uh. That has absolutely oh, challenged the old taste buds. My God. Got to take a photograph of that bottle though. Um, yeah, so to break it down, it says it's gold nail, then it says it's an unconventional IPA. The, it was dark amber in the pour. Um, and it says it unfined and hand bottled, so may contain a small amount of sediment what it is is the most unique oops most unique beer I've ever tasted um, oh god 11 and a half percent wow and this review is already 17 minutes long but it's 17 minutes long for a reason you could not drink you should not drink that any quicker than about 15 20 minutes you know enjoy it uh, what you've got is a, is, is a beer that has wood elements, white, red wine elements, and the flavour is on another level. The intensity of the fruit is something else. And I'm ups I feel pissed already on one bloody beer. That's ridiculous. Um, no, I'm not pissed, honestly. But uh, it's wobbling me. Um, out of five then. Wow. Um, it would not be a drink that I would want to drink again. But so glad I did, so glad I did it. Because it is amazingly different to anything I've ever had before. You know, there's a uniqueness there that deserves to be drank you know you've got to taste it you've got to try it out of five then 4.65 out of five we're in top 10 beer territory you know that uh, tells you what it is um amazing absolutely amazing you know all beer reviewers i want you to try that you know see what you think Whew. Get yourself a bottle or get down to a beer festival and email them before and say, look, can you bring some of your whatever, you know, vintage woody champagne down? I want to try it. You know, email them and ask them. Because as a beer reviewer, you want to be trying this. As a beer drinker, you've got to try it. Enjoy the old bottle. You're gonna in, you're gonna in, you're gonna get what I got. You know, there's no doubt about it. But uh what a beer. Vintage Woody Chimpain. I've had the Chimpain before, that was gorgeous. That is so different, it's just unbelievable. Uh, sorry for waffling, but for God's 
sakes, that was something else. Thanks for watching. See you soon.